Hello guys and girls, Andy Raphael from eTechnics.com here and uh, this is just a, a short video compared to what we've actually been doing lately. Firstly I'm going to apologise if, uh, if I slur my words or uh, if I say anything a bit too wrong. It's been one of them uh, sort of weeks um, with the launch of Z68 where it's just been absolutely manic and I have had very, very little sleep. But um, hopefully it's all for the better cause and it will be to give you guys um, sort of the most thorough information that you need as well as uh, some really good results at the end of it. So today what we're actually doing is a bit of a preview before um, the NDA actually lifts on the Z68 platform and today we've actually got the Z68X UD5B3 motherboard from Gigabyte. Now Z68 is the platform that's taken over P67 and it's basically just there to implement some new features. A lot of people assume that it was going to be um, implementing sort of P67 and H67 together which in a way it does on some of the boards but on the UD5 it's really about some of the new features which we will touch on very lightly but there's only so much I can say due to the NDA um, but in a couple of hours we will be able to lift that and, uh, and you'll see us actually um, in the full review of this showing you the performance, the benchmarks and, uh, and so forth. So firstly what we're going to do is the usual sort of unboxing just have a look at what comes included and then we're going to take you on a little tour sort of around the motherboard and you can see exactly um, what it looks like but as I said we can't delve into the features too much and we can't comment on performance at all so uh, what we're going to do is take you off the tripod and uh, give you a view of exactly what this box and the motherboard is about uh, in as much detail as we can at the moment so right if we take you off of here and bring you over to the box it's going to put the box down flat so the box is it's quite busy really as you can see straight away there is a lot of information on here and I'm not going to go through everything uh, because this is only a preview and we only want to show you sort of you know a, a few things to, to wet your lips as it were to, to get you excited so when the review is actually out um, you can see everything there but um, it does list some of the main features on here the touch BIOS uh, which is a, a new feature that we actually wrote a news article about a little while ago so if you're not sure what that is head over to eTechnics and we, uh, we do comment on what the touch BIOS is and there's a video from Colin Bricks at Gigabyte explaining exactly what it does um, a few of the other main features is SLI ready 20 phase power design and uh, it is the B3 revision so it hasn't got any of the problems that sort of the, the initial P67 platform had other than that the usual sort of 333, USB 3 and SATA 3 that's pretty much it for the front um, until obviously the review looking at the back it's just once again your usual bits of information you get a diagram of the board listing some of the main features the 333 acceleration, it's got 20 phase power there is an error up here, three-way SLI, it only supports two-way SLI. Uh, Gigabyte are aware of the issue and they will be changing the design of the box, but it has got three-way graphics with Crossfire X, but for SLI it's only two-way, hence why you'll see there's only a single SLI bridge that comes included with this. So if we try to open this up one-handed, which is always a fun task. So generally when you open up a gigabyte board, um, the box, you'll notice that it's got sort of a, a two-way split design, whereas this one it's just got sort of a single plain white box, nothing too exciting. But if we open that up, you can see that inside is loads of accessories. So we get the IO panel shield plate, still in the uh, sort of grey style and it would have been nice to see some black styling now that Gigabyte have gone with the black styling on their motherboards get the utility DVD but it's always handy to go onto their website to download the latest drivers uh, this is just a warning really to tell you that it's suitable for 1155 CPUs and not 1156 though the coolers are interchangeable so you can use an 1156 cooler on this board your single SLI bridge as we said it does support SLI but only in two way get some serial ATA cables one is right angled and they have got the metal clips on there 
to lock into your drive so with SSDs it doesn't really work and another set there Z68 UD5 manual, user's manual so in there it goes through the BIOS everything, it's got diagrams, pictures and lots of information you also get a multilingual installation guidebook if you're in other countries can't read English if so you won't be able to understand a word that I'm probably saying right now um, you also get this brief sort of manual um, which is in French Dolby Home Theatre case badge sticker it's also a gigabyte one as well you get this gigabyte branded sort of brushed effect USB 3 connector which uh, has got the USB 3 header on there and that goes into your sort of floppy drive bay and that's it really for the accessories now opening this part up will reveal the motherboard in the usual sort of anti-static bag and what we're going to do is we're going to open this up give you a tour on the actual motherboard and uh, you can sort of tell us what you think on the design and the style aspect of it but as said we can't sort of delve into the uh, into the performance and we can't delve into the features too much but uh, we will look at the motherboard and uh, take it from there so guys this is the uh, Z68 UD5 obviously there's plenty of other boards in the Gigabyte range UD7 is actually going to be the top one you've got the UD4, the UD3H which are the ones that implement the onboard graphics but this one is the UD5 so it's it's not really your most extreme one it hasn't got the three way SLI, it's only got two way SLI but other than that it has got very much the same sort of features as the UD7 um, UD7 has actually got 24 phase power and that sort of delves us into here which you can see we've got uh, a 20 phase power design which is covered by this patented sort of gigabyte cooling which comes down um, gigabyte branding on here and it follows a really nice colour scheme, the whole board really is, uh, is black as we saw in the P67 UD7 that we looked at a couple of days ago and uh, instead of having sort of the gold accents it's got blue which is a really really nice sort of colour scheme so as I said you've got your 20 phase power around here denotes that it's the UD5 and it's ultra durable as well the socket itself 1155 with some of the main features just branded around here and uh, because it is an 1155 it does take the 1156 coolers not the processor though just the coolers um, so if you are upgrading for 1150 to up uh, 1155 from 1156 that's always going to be handy you don't have to sort of spend out more money on uh, on the coolers and so forth um, next up we've got the memory and uh, if we take a look at the memory you can see that there's four ports and uh, this accepts um, dual channel memory and the memory on this board takes up to uh, DDR3 2133 so a uh, quite high spec memory goes all the way from 1066 up to 2133 and it will support up to 32 gig of memory in dual channel mode and it also has support for uh, for XMP profiles as well being an Intel based system if you have got some XMP modules put it in there and it will accept the profiles and that should sort out the voltages and the SPD timings and things all from the sort of start we've got some dedicated buttons down here for the hardcore overclockers power button we've got a reset switch and a CMOS switch that's just next to your ATX24 pin There's a couple of fan headers, one over here got your CPU one up here other power connector in the usual place we've got the 8 pin for uh, extended ATX and another system fan header moving down we've got our CMOS battery and then we've also got the uh, serial ATA ports now there isn't mass amounts, there's only 6 but there is eSATA on this board as well but um, straight away you can see that 4 of them are black and 2 of them are white the, uh, the 4 are SATA 3G and then the white are SATA 6G so it's quite upsetting I guess that um, the board has only got two SATA 6G ports, we did think it would have more but that's what sort of, uh, sort of uh, shows its comparison against the UD7 so if you do want more then obviously you're going to be going for the UD7 instead front panel connectors, you can see they're all colour coded like usual we've got some USB headers as well, we've got one here and one here for USB 2.0 
and it's also got two ports for USB 3.0 native and another fan header just here has got the on off charge feature that uh, Gigabyte have implemented a couple more fan headers so uh, they've really fought ahead with uh, regards to cooling obviously the passive cooling is fantastic on this board anyway um, just like it has been on the P67 boards for some reason there is a firewire port there but we all know that no one really uses it much these days taking a look at the expansion slots you can see that they all follow the sort of black colour scheme we've got a PCI Express X1 slot up here just down from this is PCI Express 16 another PCI Express X1 another PC, uh, this one's actually a PCI, a legacy PCI slot for the users who have got older style cards, maybe a TV card, expansion cards we've got another PCI Express slot, this is an X8 slot another legacy PCI slot and then finally a PCI Express slot down here which runs at X4 so um, one thing I will comment on is the spacing between the PCI slots is quite nice, you can see that obviously the first card will go up here, then there's two ports in between and then room for your second card, so if you are running Crossfire or SLI it's quite nice because the graphics cards are obviously dual slot so once you've got one card in there, another one in there, there's quite a lot of room to help the cards breathe which is really really nice. Just up from there we can see we've got our front panel audio just here and USB 3 and we can see the uh, NEC chip just here and we've got a Realtek audio chip just here and finally really taking a look at the uh, IO panel you can see that there's uh, it's very bright and very colourful all colour coded so we've got our PS2 mouse and keyboard port combo port two USB 2.0 and because they're not blue so they're USB 2.0 we've got optical USB diff and coaxial firewire and uh, the smallest style of firewire some more USB 2.0 ports eSATA four USB 3.0 ports but obviously you've got the two headers on the front as well we've got gigabit LAN only a single one on the UD7 we do believe that we'll have another one here so you have dual gigabit LAN and then we've got our analog audio as well so uh, that's the board really in all its glory that's about all we can sort of show you really um, it's mainly to do with the styling the black styling with the blue accents and uh, the standard features that you'd expect we can't comment on the SSD caching that Intel have, uh, are implementing into the Z68 board but on the review we will look into that in a lot more detail and we will also look into the uh, touch BIOS as well um, so there are some, some really good features with this and what we're actually going to do is get an i5 2500K in here overclock it to the helm and see how far we can push it especially compared to the P67 um, overclock that we got and we're also going to put an i7 2600K in here as well and overclock that and then we're going to benchmark them both at stock and both at um, the overclock speeds to sort of see how they do so uh, for now that's really all we can show you on the Z68 platform and the UD5 in general but straight away you can see that memory wise it accepts some really nice speeds processor wise second generation some nice amount of uh, expansion slots for all your graphics cards Crossfire in 3-way and SLI in 2-way and some really good passive cooling by the looks of it as well and the 20 phase power so uh, be sure to check out etechnics.com very soon and uh, subscribe to YouTube and uh, you will get a notification that we've got the review up on this board with all the benchmarks and the new features Touch BIOS SSD caching until then I'm Andy Raphael from etechnics.com and uh, see you later.